Hello guys and welcome to the second part of the Minecraft 1.13 mod tutorial series. In today's episode we're going to be setting up the basics so that we can boot our mod into the game for the first time. If you haven't watched the Java tutorial series that are linked in the description, please go watch that unless you obviously know Java already, in which case you'll be fine. But please just watch that tutorial so you fully understand everything we're going to be doing in today's episode and there on in the tutorial series. Anything that we need additional to that, I will teach you in the tutorial series, but please make sure you've watched that before beginning. If you've done that, then let's get started. Firstly, we're going to go over here to Java and create a new package. Call it your username, so my username, I'm going to put Harry, dot, and the name of your mod, so tutorial mod. And that's a package. You should know what that is if you've gone and watched the Java tutorial series. Create a new class, and this is going to be our main mod class. So you can either call this the name of your mod, or the main class, or the mod class. I'm going to call it the name of my mod. Tutorial mod. And we've created that class there. We are then going to um, add an annotation, which is at mod which tells um, Forge that this is a mod. Control shift o and that will automatically import uh, the at mod package here. And it wants to take in a parameter, which is your mod ID. A mod ID is a string of um, characters up to 64 letters long that represents the unique ID for your mod. So make sure this is unique to your mod and no one else's mod or if you try to run them in tandem, it won't work. So I'm going to put tutorial mod. But as I said, you do not want yours to be tutorial mod, yours to be something different. It has to be lowercase. All things have to be lowercase when we're coding, apart from class names. So now we've created that, we have declared this is the mod class. We are going to create the constructor, control space, and it'll open up this window here and we can add the constructor in. And inside of here, we need to um, have it so that the forge function, so all the stuff that forge does, runs on our mod as well as the other mods. So, Minecraft Forge dot event bus dot register this. So now that all the forge functions will run on your mod, the next thing we're going to do is create two functions. One is the setup function. So private void setup and the parameters of this is going to be a final fml common setup event and name that event so this will um, everything inside of here will run under the setup event this is what used to be the pre-init function if you've modded before so anything you would have put in pre-init put it in here and anything new, I'll show when to put things in there when we get around to it. And then you can copy this function and paste it. And we're going to call it client registries. And instead of FML common setup event, we're going to change this to FML client setup event. And everything's out of here will only run on the client side. Um, so that's things like models. Um, and other things that we don't want to be rendering for everyone. So now we've got those two functions, we need to register them inside of our constructor so that they'll be loaded when we're loading the mod. So fml java mod loading context dot get dot get mod event bus dot add listener this colon colon setup. What this does is when we're loading the mod, it will listen for everything inside of the setup function. And we can do the same thing for the client registries. Again, you can click control space and it will search for the client registry registries function, which is here. So now those two are both loaded when we load the mod. Next thing we're going to do, we're firstly going to create an instance. So public static tutorial mod instance 
and we're going to declare that inside of the constructor here. Instance is equal to this. And this is a way of referencing our main mod class um, outside of our main mod class. We also need to create a variable for our mod ID. Public static final string mod ID and it's equal to make sure it's the same string as what you had up here in the app mod. We have to use this string here as that we have to type manually type this out um, as it's above our class and we can't declare a variable before our class. But whenever we reference our mod ID from now on anywhere in our mod, make sure we reference to this variable here. Because then if we ever change our mod ID, everything inside of your mod um, will be updated to match the new mod ID rather than you having to manually change every single one. And the final thing we're going to create is something called a logger. So private static final logger, call it logger. And that's equal to log manager dot get logger and then put mod ID as its um, intake. Control shift O and make sure you choose log for J logger. And this logger is something that we can use to print things out in the console, which you can find over here. Um, and it will display um, or any messages that we want to confirm that things are working correctly. So for example, inside of the setup function, we can put logger.info and choose the one that is string message. And we can write anything here. So you can just write setup method registered and it will um, when we get around to looking at this setup it will print out in the console setup method registered and you can do the same thing inside the client registries function and change that to client registries and that is the main mod class we've set everything up that we might need now we can go into resources meta inf and this mod.toml file It'll open up in your text editor or just in the actual um, for thing itself. And this is a file that um, tells a lot of information about your mod to the Forge mod loader. There's lots of comments here which we can remove to make it more simple. And we'll go through each step. The mod loader, it's obviously Java Forge mod loader. And it will always be that, so you can always leave that there. The loader version is 24. That's the current Forge version and will be for all of Minecraft 1.13. So you can leave that as it is. The issue tracker URL. This is a place, if you have a website, where people can report issues about your mod. I'm going to remove that for now, but you can add this back whenever you want, just by referring to this variable here. Um, the display URL. This is the place where your mod, um, where you can find your mod. So you can put your Curse Forge link here or a link to your website or anything like that. Once again, I'm gonna remove that one. The um, logo file, I will go over towards the end of the tutorial series. Um, it's just a file, um, a logo that displays next to your mod in the list of mods. Um, I'm gonna remove that for now as well. The credits, so anything that you want to show up um, inside of your mods file for you to credit people. So credits, you can just thank me if you want or you can thank anyone you want in the credits and it will show up inside of the Forge mod page. The authors, so the people that made the mod, that's going to be yourself. So this is the mod section. So it'll be the list of mods. We're only gonna have one mod obviously. So the mod ID, make sure it's the same as the one you have in your main mod file. So copy that and put it inside of here. The version number, um, we're just gonna change here to 0 0.1, um, as it's the first version of our mod. The mod name, so whatever you want your mod to display as, so Harry's tutorial mod can be my mod name. The update URL, 
um, where it can look to see if there's any updates. If you have one of these, again, you can set it up, um, but I'm going to remove it for now. Uh, the description, this can be multiple lines long, and it can be whatever you want, any information about your mod. And dependencies are mods, um, are mods that your mod relies on, so that your mod will not work with without. So change this example mod to your mod ID, and you can leave all this stuff as it is, as your mod does rely on Forge and Minecraft. And that is the mods.toml file complete. If you are watching um, when Forge is out of beta, then you can just should be able to run this, um, and it should just work. Unfortunately, the current version of Forge um, doesn't work when clicking this run button from Eclipse. So we are going to have to do something, um, just a quick workaround. Go into your file explorer and find where you have tutorial mod. Make sure in view you have file name extensions enabled and change the name of this to run client dot bat. Then edit this file and it'll open up the text editor and you just have to want write gradle w run client and then save it. Then double click this and it will begin to run the game. And there we go, we have Harry's tutorial mod version 0.1. Mod ID tutorial mod. This is my mod, it's great, it's up to PewDiePie. So if you have found this useful or enjoyed this tutorial, please leave a like. So if, you, so if you have enjoyed this tutorial, please leave a like down below and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, my name's been Harry, and goodbye.